Hi guys. This is D. Igorotech. Today, I will show you step by step on how to configure SD WAN on FortiGate Firewall. SD WAN allows networks to connect more easily to the internet, other networks, data centers, and or multiple clouds with lower latency, better performance, and more reliable connectivity. The key idea behind SD WAN is to use software to dynamically direct traffic across a wide area network based on the most efficient path available, which can include multiple connection types such as broadband, fiber, MPLS, multi protocol label switching, and others. Let's begin. For this demo, we will use this 40 Gate 60F device. This device is running firmware version 7.4.1. Let's first check the network interfaces. I currently have two WAN connections. WAN 1 is DHCP and WAN 2 has a fixed IP address. After we successfully configure the SD WAN then we will configure PPPoE on the port 4 interface as my third WAN link then we will add it on the SD WAN virtual interface. Let's check the WAN 1. As you can see the addressing mode is DHCP so I automatically receive this IP address. For WAN 2, I had set it the IP address manually. If we check the reference tab, notice that for WAN 1, we have one reference, and WAN 2 have two. For the WAN interfaces that you want to be a member of SD WAN, make sure that it's not in used on any firewall policies, if in use then you cannot configure it to be a member of SD WAN. You can click on the reference number for more details. You can also hover your cursor on it to view more details, you can see the policy name, policy ID etc. Let's check the WAN 2. We have one firewall policy and one static route. If we check the firewall policy, we can see here that we have one policy for WAN 1 and one policy for WAN 2. We have two options. We can either delete the policy or change the interface. I usually change to a different interface especially if it's a special or complex policy. No need to recreate the policy again after we configure the SD WAN. We can use any of the unused interfaces since this is only temporary. Again, it's based on your preference. You can delete the policy and then recreate again later. Now, let's check the interfaces again. Notice that the WAN 1 has now zero reference. We can now use this interface to configure the SD WAN. For the WAN 2, let's leave it first for now for you to see the difference. Now, let's configure the SD WAN. Go to SD WAN, you can see the default virtual SD WAN interface which is the virtual WAN link. Notice it's grayed out and if you hover your cursor on it, it shows disabled. This will automatically be activated once we add some interface. If we click create new, we have two options, SD WAN member to add an interface on the default SD WAN virtual interface. Choose SD WAN zone to create a new SD WAN zone. We will use the default for now then later on I will show you how to create new zone. For the interface, we will choose the interface which is going to be a member of the SD-WAN which in our case is WAN1. For the SD-WAN zone, again, we will use the default for now, you can choose a different zone if you have one. The gateway will be automatically added since this interface is DHCP, unless you want to change the gateway IP address then you need to specify. For the cost and priority, we will leave it to default. Make sure the status is enabled then click OK to apply. Notice that the virtual WAN link is now active after we added a member. You can tick on the plus sign to expand and you will see the members of this zone. You can also see here the details, the gateway, cost, download and upload. Next is we will add another member which is WAN2. Again, trick create new. Choose SD WAN member. Notice that WAN2 is not on the list. This is because it is still in used on firewall policy. Let's check the firewall policy. You can see that WAN2 is still bonded to a policy. We can either change to different interface or delete the policy. Let's go back to SD WAN tab then refresh the window. We will try to add again. Create new SD WAN member. WAN2 is now available since it's no longer tied to any policy. 
since I manually configured this interface IP address then I need also to manually specify the gateway. Gateway is the ISP router's IP address. We will leave the cost and priority to default. Make sure status is enabled then click OK to apply the changes. From here, you can already see the members of the SD-WAN which are WAN 1 and WAN 2. You can also tick the plus sign on the virtual interface to view the members. If you want to modify the gateway IP address, you can also do it from here. Next is we will configure the default route. Go to static route. This was my default static route for WAN 2. Since WAN 2 is already a member of the SD-WAN then we can delete this entry. Tick on it then choose delete. Click OK to proceed. Let's now create a static route for the SD-WAN zone. Click create new. For the interface, choose the SD-WAN zone. You can hover your cursor over it to view the details, you can see the members of this SD-WAN zone. The destination would be subnet and leave it to 8 zeros. 8 zeros means all or the internet. You can leave a comment if you want. Make sure the status is enabled and click OK to apply the changes. We can see the newly default route. Destination is 8 zeros or the internet. Gateway IP is blank because there's multiple interface on this zone. Interface would be the SD-WAN zone. Status is enabled. By default the distance is 1. If you want to change the distance then double click on the entry. Choose edit in CLI. Here you can modify the distance based on your preference. Now, let's go back to SD-WAN. Go to performance SLAs tab. Here are the default SLA entries. We can delete these entries then create a new one. We need to delete them one by one. Let's now create a new SLA. Click create new. Since this entry is to ping Google DNS then we will put a name ping Google DNS for our reference. Probe mode is active. For the protocol, we will choose ping, you can choose different protocols if you prefer. Server IP would be Google DNS which is 8.8.8.8. .8 we can add more servers, we can add the Cloudflare DNS. Best practice is to add more servers for failover purposes. If it fails to ping the primary server then it will fail to the secondary server. For the participants, we can leave it to all SD-WAN members or you can tick specify then manually add the SD-WAN members which in my case is WAN 1 and WAN 2. Tick SLA target to enable. For the latency threshold, we will set it to 50, so if the link latency threshold goes over 50 milliseconds then it's considered degraded. The same goes with the jitter threshold. If it goes over 10 milliseconds then it's considered degraded. And of course zero packet loss. Next is the link status. Check interval is 500 milliseconds which is 2 times per second. And if there's a 5 consecutive probes failures in a row then it will consider that link inactive. You can hover your cursor on the information icon to view the details. It will bring that link back up as active after it receives 5 consecutive probe responses in a row. Also, the interface where we lose the probes will also remove any static routes associated with that WAN interface. Click OK to apply the changes. For a few seconds, the entry will be grayed out and you will see those question marks. Wait for it to initialize the entry then refresh the page. Now, you can see the interfaces are up and the packet loss percentage. You can also see the latency threshold which is around 5 milliseconds. Jitter threshold which is around 0 0.20 milliseconds. Failure and recovery threshold which are 5 checks. From the graph, you can see my connection is very stable. This is because I'm using fiber for both lines. Now, let's configure the firewall policy. This was the firewall policy before which we changed the outgoing interface. We will modify this policy again. If we check the outgoing interface, the WAN 1 and WAN 2 is not already in the list. Once we configure the SD WAN, we can no longer use those WAN member interfaces to configure a firewall policy. Instead, we will use the SD WAN zone interface. Click OK to apply the changes. Let's create a new policy. This will be a very basic policy just to allow LAN network to access the internet. Let's give a name of LAN to internet. The incoming interface would be the internal. 
Outgoing Interface, we will choose the SD-WAN interface. You can hover your cursor over it to view the members. The source would be the internal or LAN network. Destination to all. Schedule to all ways and services to all. NAT should be enabled. Now, choose the security profiles based on your preference. I just simply use the default profiles for this demo. Log allowed traffic. I personally choose all sessions for troubleshooting purposes. Click OK to apply the changes. I will just create a new policy for the guest network. We have now configured the firewall policy using the SD-WAN zone interface. Now, let's go back to SD-WAN, go to SD-WAN rules tab. This is where you specify the outgoing interface based on your preference. It's like a hybrid version of policy-based route or PBR. Let's create a new rule. Click Create New. For this policy, I want this computer to access internet through WAN 1. We will give a name of Jack to WAN 1. Make sure status is enabled. First would be the source. For the address, I will choose this computer address which is Jack. You can also use the address group if you want. Next is the destination. You can choose either address or internet service based on your preference. I want this computer to access anything so I will choose the address and choose all. For the protocol number, you can also specify if you prefer. I will leave it to any so that I can access anything. Next is the outgoing interface. Choose the interface selection strategy. Choose manual if you want to manually assign outgoing interface. Choose best quality if you want to select the interface with the best measured performance. Lastly is the lower cost. For this demo, we will choose the best quality. For the interface preference, again, I prefer this user to pass through WAN 1 so I will choose WAN 1. You can choose zone preference if you want to use the SD WAN zone. Next is the measured SLA. We will choose the performance SLA we created earlier which is the ping Google DNS. For the quality criteria, we will choose latency. You can choose different options based on your preference. Click OK to apply the changes. We receive some error, input value is invalid. We will remove the spaces or we will simply give a name of Jack to make it simple. We have now configured a new SD-WAN rule for a specific user. This user Jack can access anything through the WAN1 interface, if the WAN1 interface is down or it doesn't meet the criteria then it will automatically fail over to WAN2. No worries, we will do a test later on. Next is we will create an SD-WAN rule for the rest of the internal users. We can give a name of LAN. The source address would be the internal. Destination address would be all since I want to allow everything. We will choose also the best quality. For the interface preference, we can choose our preferred interface. For this rule, I want WAN2 to be the primary so I will put it on top. If the WAN2 is down or it doesn't meet the criteria then it will automatically fail over to WAN1. We can also use the performance SLA that we created earlier. Quality criteria will be latency. Click OK to apply the changes. I also created another rule for the guest network. Let's refresh the page. Go back to SD-WAN rules. If you notice, there are some check signs on some of the interfaces on each rule. This means, traffic are running through those interfaces. You can see that rule number 1 is going through WAN 1. Rule number 2 is going through WAN 2. And rule number 3 is going through WAN 2 as well. You can also see here the hit count and last update time. Let's do a test. We will first check my laptop's IP address. You can see that I have the IP address 10.255.255.254. It's the jack address that is running on rule number 1 and the outgoing interface is WAN 1. We will do a continuous ping to google.com. Now, let's go to network, interfaces to disable the WAN 1 interface. Let's check the command prompt. Notice that we don't have any packet loss. If we go back to SD WAN rules, we can see here that the WAN 1 interface is physically down. All the traffic fail over to WAN 2. Let's go back to the network interfaces to enable the WAN 1 assuming that the connection has been restored. 
let's wait for it to receive IP address since this interface is DHCP. Now, when one is back online, notice that we don't also have packet loss. Let's go back to SD WAN rules. Notice that the traffic automatically fail over to WAN 1. Let's check the firewall policy. You can see that it's running on those firewall policy. Again, we only configure the SD WAN rule to define our preferred outgoing interface, apply load balancing, etc. I hope by now you know how to configure SD WAN. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.